When the pH is 7, then it's a case where the sample is neither acids nor base. But less than 7, it's an acid, we say. More than 7, it's a base all the way. If I were to ask you what atomic number and how many protons does hydrogen have, you might say, well, hydrogen itself has the atomic number of 1. And if it has a atomic number of 1, it must therefore have 1 proton, which would be correct. And if I were then to ask you how many electrons does it have, you might say, well, if it's a neutral atomic state, it would have to have 1 proton, which has a positive charge, and thereby also have 1 electron, which has a negative charge. And overall, negative and positive would equal each other out, and that would be your atom. That would be correct. So normal hydrogen atom has 1 proton and 1 electron. But what happens if it loses an electron? Well, if it loses an electron, then it becomes H+. plus. It only has one proton and has no more electron. So it's more or less just a proton by itself. And the reason why that's important is because the dot point itself says define acids as proton donors and describe the ionization of acids in water. So define acids as proton donors. And as you just established, we, a hydrogen is actually more or less simply a proton. Hydrogen ion is more or less simply proton, so often when we talk about proton donors, we're actually talking about hydrogen itself, or hydrogen ions. I'll go over that more now, but the first part is, you might have heard of hydrochloric acid before, that's a, obviously a quite famous acid, hydrochloric acid. You would use that in year 11, year 10, year 9. But if you have a look at this here, you might think, well this must be hydrochloric acid, it has the same chemical formula. It's a bit different because here the actual state it's in, it's a gas. And hydrochloric acid itself is aqueous. So this is actually not yet hydrochloric acid. This is a hydrogen chloride, which is gas at the moment. But what we'll do now is we'll actually create hydrochloric acid. We create that by putting a hydrogen chloride into water. And once that happens, we actually have the ionization. So the second part was describe the ionization of acids in water. So now we're going to put our hydrogen chloride into water, and you're going to see the ions being formed. So what will happen when this, when this happens is we have a H plus coming. So this will go off away from the chlorine and become a hydrogen ion. And we also have a chlorine ion or a chloride ion being formed. So now we have our chlorine chloride and our hydrogen ions formed. And that was the ionization of water. But you might still be sort of confused because, well, it has this water molecule here, but there's no water molecule anywhere in the actual products. And the reason why is because it actually is there, but we often we just don't write it. And I'll go over why in a second. But I'll quickly go over again what an ion is as well. So this is an ion itself is if there's an unequal charge. For whatever reason, if there's an unequal charge in the actual atom or well, the atom itself is equal, so an, an ion is unequal charge. And we said earlier, these here, the hydrogen chl chlorine here, if you look at the actual Lewis dot structure, they were sharing the electrons. So here they were sharing their electrons, and what that meant is it's actually an atom. So they have, even though they have their full set, it's not an ion because they're sharing their atoms. But what happens in a second, because chlorine is obviously an ion now, what actually happened is it grabbed that extra electron for itself and thereby first it was this, you know, the actual chlorine has the atomic number of 17, so it's here, chlorine is here, it has the atomic number of 17 which also means that it would have 17 protons, so it has 17 protons at the moment, at the beginning, and if it has 17 protons it also has 17 electrons, if it's an atom it would have to have equal charge, but because it's going to become, it's now it's a chlorine ion, so it has unequal charge. And the reason why is because it grabbed an extra electron, so it has 17 to begin with, but in the end it had 18, and I'll go over in a second why that happened. And if it has 18 electrons and 17 protons, it means it has one more electron than a proton, therefore we write that minus, because it has one more minus charge, electrons are minus, and protons are positive. It has one more minus charge and positive charge, which means overall it's negative. That was, again, just a quick summary of what an ion was. What happened here is we produced these different ions, a hydrogen ion and a chlorine ion. But why exactly did this happen? What you can imagine, and these are the Lewis dot structures of both water and chlor uh, hydrogen chloride. 
And what will happen here is you're going to have this here, which is our hydrogen chloride. And at the moment it's a covalent bond, so they're sharing their atoms. What's going to happen is this is here, this hydrogen, so I'm, what I'm circling, moving around here is our hydrogen. At the moment it's sharing, so you can see that extra electron next to it in green, the bright green. It's sharing that electron of chlorine. But what's going to happen is it's going to pass a water molecule, so this water molecule over here. And it's basically going to, going to rip it off it. So it's going to rip it off it and attach it on its own actual chain. All right, so this, this happened in the actual product. It took this hydrogen and then became something called the hydronium ion. So this is the, one of the products. This is a hydronium ion. This, this is the same as this here. Hydrogen ion is the same as this. And I'll go over why in a second, but we call that a hydronium hydronium ion. And the other one, so what we have left over, well we have this chlorine ion left over. And as I said earlier, it was sharing this electron, so it wasn't its own electron. But now because the hydrogen is gone, it didn't take its, its actual electron along with it. It just took the hydrogen proton and that's it. It gave the proton away, it didn't take, give the electron away. So now it still has an electron. So now we have call this an actual chlorine ion because it's not sharing it anymore. It's by itself. And it grabbed that extra electron. So now it has one more electron than it would usually have. So therefore this here is a chlorine ion. So this is negative. And we established beforehand why that's negative. And this one's actually positive, and the reason why is because this hydrogen ion had one proton. It didn't have an electron, it only had a proton. And it attached to this hydronium, this water molecule, which was neutral charge beforehand. But we've added one more positive to it. So it was neutral before, and now we added one more positive. But it didn't take its actual electron along, so it had no more negative to go along with it. So it only had the normal neutral structure plus a positive. So overall, that whole molecule is now positive. So therefore well, we say it's positive. Um, and the reason why we often don't write hydronium ion, but actually write just H plus, is because that's the thing we want to focus on. The rest, I mean this whole structure is not important. The more main important part is the fact that we have this hydronium as uh, hydrogen ion that was donated. That's the thing we want to focus on. And we can we can write that this is hydronium ion, we can write H3O as well. We can write that if we want to. You don't, you don't get minus marks. That's the same thing. But just for you know making it easier and, and less messy, I guess, it's just easier to write H+. plus. It's more or less the same thing. But I'll either use hydronium ion or H+, plus, but you should remember, they're both the same thing. Right, so I'll go through another example, and this is nitric acid. And here we have HNO3 plus H2O, we're going to have the same procedure at the moment. They're not a acid at the moment, so this is not actually this is not a nitric acid, but this will be soon dissolved in water. So at the moment, it's liquid, and liquid obviously does not mean it's dissolved. If it's dissolved, it means it's aqueous. And what we're going to do, we're going to put this liquid into water, and then what happens is this hydrogen here, this hydrogen, will go off. So we'll go to the other side. It will detach from that whole molecule because it will be attached to that H. So I'll write H3O because it grabbed the water molecule grabbed an extra hydrogen, and it's, therefore it's positive. Again, remember we can also write that as H plus. Same thing. These two are the same thing. And then what we have left over is the other structure, the NO3, and that will be our negative because now it's Again, the, when the hydrogen actually left, it didn't take its electron long, so it'll have an extra electron, and therefore it's negatively charged. So now we have a positive hydrogen ion, or we could call it a positive hydronium ion, and a negative nitrate, I think it's a nitrate, nitrate ion. And this here will be aqueous, because now it's dissolved. I'll go over the dot point again. It says define acids as proton donors. And we saw how these protons get donated. They get donated in the form of that hydrogen ion. So that's this is what causes something to be acidic, the extra hydrogen ion. And describe the ionization of acids in waters in water. So that was the whole point of when we have, for example, hydrogen chloride in its gas form, we put that into water. And then what happens is it dissociates into its ions. So hydrogen ion, chloride ion. 
and that was the ionization of acids and water. That was that was that what that meant. And we can do the same thing for the other one as well, and the same thing happens as well. But yeah, those two things you should be able to know. You should know that you know we're talking about proton donors when it comes to acids, and you should realize that that hydrogen ion was that proton, and you should be able to describe the ionization of water. It's just when we have two, for example, hydrogen chloride and water coming together that we have then in our products we have the ions themselves. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.